Howdy folks, my name is Trevor Struthers. This machine here we call a Vector. It's a self-propelled ground sprayer. In the last two months, I have sprayed around 20,000 acres using this machine. At 10 to 12 miles an hour, you can cover a lot of ground in the field. At 50 miles an hour, it doesn't take long to get to the next one either. My Vector here has 72 individually controlled valves, one for each nozzle. These valves pulse open and close automatically based on the ground speed and the estimated speed of the booms. While turning, the outside boom has to increase its rate or pulses per second in order to keep the correct rates. For this field, I'm spraying at the rate of 20 gallons per acre. I'm applying an herbicide called Aggressor on some coaxium winter wheat. Aggressor kills pretty much everything except for, of course, this special wheat called coaxium. This wheat cannot be replanted, not by us at least. It would be a violation of the contract signed in order to have the legal right to plant this seed, which you must purchase and they must be certified seeds. This program of using aggressor on coaxium wheat is a tool to get some problem weeds like feral cereal rye out of the field. Rye must all be pulled by hand and is expensive to have done and is usually requires a lot of people. In this field there will be no weeds if I do my job right and then for the next few years there will be a lot less weeds in this particular field. But this cannot keep going on forever. You can't keep using aggressor and coaxium wheat. It costs around $40 an acre to spray this wheat. If that gives you any estimation, this field's about 300 acres, and the average will be somewhere between 70 to 100 maybe. This is our Prescott, Washington farm, where we have some of the steepest land around. The south-facing slopes are often soft and slippery. For those newer and bigger machines, this can cause quite the issue. This here vector is made for the hills. It was designed to go up and down some steep, soft stuff out here in the Palouse. The thing is, it's a little bit steeper out here than it is in the Palouse, because I'm out west. I'm farther west than the Palouse, where we've got the skyrockets. And these here are some small versions of the skyrockets across the road. Behind me now, or off to the left, which is straight ahead for you, those are the skyrockets. Our farm stretches across two counties and can be up to a 35 mile move to the next field. In another video, I'll show you some of the steeper ground we have and some of the steepest stuff I've ever taken this vector on. The whole time I was thinking this thing has no business on these hills. Because yes, it was designed for the hills, but it was not designed for what you guys might call mountains. That field behind me probably has a 25 degree slope, which isn't that bad. But up ahead of me, I'm going down a north to south slope, so it actually faces west. Or no, excuse me, it'll be facing east, so I'll go along it, and it is super soft. And it's also dusty. You see here where it's patchy, that's just really light ground right there. For some reason, the wheat didn't grow, or wasn't planted deep enough, or it planted too deep because it's so soft compared to the rest of the field. Because before you plant, you have to set the depth. And based on the compactness of the soil, the depth can change. Normally our rates are like 10 to 12. Uh, some people use higher rates, but we use 10 to 12, and it tends to work. Something like 32 gallons per acre on our Roundup is the rate we're using. Yeah, you can really imagine if I was spraying right here, which I'm not, I'm going through a corner. If I was spraying right here, the outside boom would have to go way faster than the inside as far as how many gallons per acre, because the inside is barely moving, and the outside is going 50 miles an hour. It's probably not actually 50, maybe 30. But it's hard to tell how steep this is. I'm on a side hill right here. Like, there's no way to really gauge this. It looks flat. It starts all looking pretty flat after a while. But you can tell by how I'm sliding down off the hill a little bit that it's kind of steep here. The deeper the tracks that I'm making, usually the steeper it is. So this wheat right here is a brand. It's, uh, I forget the name of the brand. Alba? I believe Alba, A-L-B-A-U-G-H, they own the rights to this wheat, and it's not genetically modified, it's genetically selected. So it's uh, tolerant to a certain herbicide that they have created, a special type, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I, we're able to spray it onto the wheat, their special coaxium wheat, this aggressor, which is like $40 an acre to apply, just for the spray. Not counting this machine, not counting paying me to spray in this machine, because this isn't my machine. I'm at work right here. I work for somebody else who obviously trusts me and thinks I know what I'm doing, which is good because most days I do know what I'm doing as long as I've given a little bit of thought before I do it. But usually I don't get out the GoPro before I go do something crazy. So there's not all the videos of me sliding off these hills, 
not many videos of the bad things that happen because I'm not really out here trying to broadcast the bad things I do. Uh, I know you guys like mayhem and anarchy, but maybe I'll have to leave that anarchy word out. YouTube might ban me for saying such things. So, you can see as I turn, it's just way faster on this outer wing tip. Wing tip. It's a little bit dusty out. But you can see my spray coming out. You can see the the water. I'm not out here as much, some some of these tractor videos out here on YouTube will have you believe. I'm not applying water. We're not irrigating the crops right here. I'm applying pesticides and herbicides. The pesticide is to kill the um, the fungus. So there's uh, my crop is the name of it. I'm applying that, which is a fungicide, and then I'm spraying this aggressor, which is a selective herbicide. And I'm also spraying some type of emulate through it. And the emulate, which is a some type of crop oil or some type of oil, it helps the whole plant get contact. So it kills the plants better that it comes in contact with. And then you wait about three hours and it's good. You're good. Yeah, behind me again, you can see the lines of the planting. The furrows. We call them furrows. You can see the furrows. They go across the hill. They don't go up and down it. You can't go up and down everything. Yeah, so up here in a few seconds, you'll be able to see a coyote run out in front of where I'm going and then cross and go off to the right side of the screen. You got to be watching kind of close. They blend in pretty well. This is 1080p, but I'm going fairly fast. We have a lot of coyotes out here. The coyotes perform a good function. They keep the rodent population down. They kill gophers. They're just good. Evidently, they used to run in packs, but now that there's so many people, they just have individual, maybe one or two coyotes running together. I've never seen more than two together unless they were puppies. I love coyotes, though, so I just figured I'd throw this in right here. Right here, you'll be able to see behind my tractor a big area down the slope that doesn't follow the lines that we seeded. That gives you a hint that it's because of the soil type that the wheat's not growing very good there. It's a heavy alkali soil. I'm not sure exactly what that means. I just know that it's light. It's very fine. It's like a silty soil. It just doesn't take very good. Yeah, so it's right there. You can see it coming down the hill like that where it just doesn't grow very good. So that's going to be a southward facing slope on the side of this side hill. This is just really soft through here. You can watch my tires just kick up a lot of dirt. You can see it flinging wheat, flinging everything, and you can see where it's falling. It's not coming straight behind my tire. That's coming down the hill towards the camera because this is just so steep. I mean, I can say steep a thousand times until you actually experience this in a vector or into a, in a side or whatever you want to call it in a non-leveling combine or non-leveling tractor. Like, you know how steep it is on this. It's real deceiving when you're in a combine because it auto levels. Like you're staying level. This does not stay level. I'm in there like fully sliding out of my seat. Right there again. It's just not growing very tall there because it's very dry there and very dusty. The water doesn't go into the soil there. It has more of a tendency to roll off the soil there. So that's why another reason why we farm along with the hill. You go with the hill. You don't farm straight up and down it with the planting. You farm along it. With the vector, however, there's certain places where I know I can't go along it side hill. I have to go straight up or straight down it. So I choose, of course, to go straight down it because I would dig trenches coming up. Again, in the background, you see the, the type of soil right there. You can see the line almost. That's, that's not a planted field, I don't believe. Oh, no, it is. It just has a lot more grain on the one side. These downhill turns are very exciting. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and park it and unintentionally, unintentionally, excuse me, leave my camera on the boom and take off. So you'll get to see the whole process. I don't fold it up or anything like that. When I get to park in the field, this is very lucky. This field is right at the road. So, and where we fill. So I can just park right there. I'm not in the way. No issues. This almost looks surreal in here, even to me as the guy who did this. Like, this looks really cool. 
I hope the people here that live in this house don't mind me uh, recording this. But yeah, another another great shot of the skyrockets in the background. This is the south side of the highway. That's the north side of the highway. That stuff's steeper. You cross the north side, it gets way steeper. But there's the truck we use to fill with water and have the chemicals on that we mix up. There's a water and fertilizer tank right next to it because we're not just applying water out here. We're applying fertilizer and water at a rate of like 20 gallons per acre. I forget how many gallons per acre of fertilizer we're putting down. Like a third of that is fertilizer of that water. So, um, yeah, like seven gallons an acre, six gallons an acre of fertilizer maybe. Which is like a top dressing. It helps the wheat along, helps it grow a little bit more. Because it's fertilized while we seed with a no-till drill. But then we go ahead and we set it up and put some more fertilizer in with the water. There goes Uncle Jamie. Taking off. Going his own way. He knows I'm done. He's done. We're all done. Hooray. I made it. So he's out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and get a ride from the boss man here. And I'm out of here too. Have a good one.